Classic Plus has more problems than you think. As we progress through Wrath Classic, I can't help but notice a rise in interest for the vanilla version of the we game beginning to grow within the player base. Like the I think original. a lot of players would happily jump back to a vanilla version of the game given good timing and a concept which looks promising. Yeah. But as usual, Blizzard holds all the cards here. And of course it's worth a mention, we don't know what's after Seasonal Mastery right now and Classic Plus is totally just a community wish at this point in time. Yet while That's Seasonal Mastery started, is soon though. to wind up, we can't help but ask what's next another season with more new ideas a no changes fresh or perhaps something much more ambitious since the early days of classic players have speculated what will come when the final boss of the expansion falls over and everyone is there in their near abyss gear twiddling their thumbs waiting for the next big content patch to drop one of those ideas oh, has yeah. always been classic plus an unofficial term from the players broadly meaning classic but instead of expansions to move us forwards into tbc and beyond there are new major content patches added instead or just up yeah, i think major content patches and then also raids that might give slightly better gear it's actually easier to make better classic gear than like better retail wow gear because you're dealing with a lot of cases just with percentages like one percent crit is one percent crit two percent is two percent Dates to the game in the spirit of classic. What if we never crossed the dark portal? What if there were new raids or new dungeons and anything else you can think of? After all, we have retail, we have classic WoW as it currently is, which is chugging along through the expansions. Give it 18 more months from now and we'll be in Cataclysm Classic, I expect. Vanilla oh ran its course faster than it did originally, so did TBC by some six months, and Wrath will probably be a little bit shorter overall too. Sure. These are the places to re-experience expansions as they once were so why not turn seasonal world of warcraft into something different something entirely innovative with new content phases and regular updates why not go all in and do classic plus well the pessimist will say it will cost money time and effort to work on something new so obviously that's not gonna happen is it and yeah I think it would probably cost less money to uh to do classic content versus like retail wow content i mean it's just lower poly there's less stuff to do with the game the game is simpler why well simply like you just don't have to make things as detailed is going to be a part of that to be honest why take an unnecessary risk when you can just re-release expansions that you know people will come back for but i think there's actually more to it than that there's a bigger picture mm -hmm. of problems that need to be addressed if classic plus were to actually be taken seriously okay, let's and for see me it. these are my three biggest problems with classic plus but first, a word from today's sponsor, right. Gemstone Legends, a high fantasy puzzle style RPG game rated 4.6 stars on Android and almost 5 on iOS. You can download the game and try for free using the link in the description or the QR code on screen. Gemstone Legends has a puzzle style element of game, but also hero collection with more than 200 heroes from 8 different factions and 5 different tiers. Every hero has a unique set of skills which can be a game changer for strategy for each battle during the puzzle battles you can use epic combo attacks in your tactical point? sense solving match three puzzles and conquering powerful monsters to build your empire and there's like dragons who doesn't like dragons gather clans as heroes and start an epic puzzle what adventure in a high fantasy rpg open world fight in pvp modes and align with other dragon riders to compete in guild wars huh. there's even a discord server where you can stay up to date with the game i'm in the game under the nickname will e download the game for free now on both android and ios and get started today game, by using guys. the link in the description or the qr code on yep. screen you'll also get a special starter right. pack worth 50 dollars by using my link including 500,000 coins 300 gems 10 mana elixirs 10 healing elixirs and a four star hero annika many thanks to gemstone legends for oh, sponsoring the video today back to wow Controlled the, the first point Man. is i've already done the content let me explain what i mean here there was a time in world of warcraft where it wasn't really known how far the game would go what would be the next major content patch and even whether there were going to be expansions on a blizzcon panel from 2007 i found something which really spoke to how blizzard did content back then plan more than we can build expect change 
adapt. There wasn't just content ideas for the next patch or patch after that. There were just ideas that various devs wanted to be part of the game. Things which yeah, I think that's I mean anybody could have seen that because like remember how they had like uh you know they had like the Dragon Isles in Classic WoW. Uh they had like Karazhan Crypts. They had all of these things like Hygel. Like yeah, that's of course what happened. And then also like apparently they were supposed to have like some uh like abyss raid that was underwater in Cataclysm and that ended up just not happening. They had worked Emerald upon Dream, and iterated yeah. upon. It was more of a question of where does this best fit within the game? After all, World of Warcraft in its early days had pretty heavy inspiration from the story of the RTS games to lean on. There were hours of cutscenes, cinematics, and story twists to draw from. It just had to be the right time to introduce each one. Mm -hmm. In fact, in its early days, the level cap of vanilla was intended to be 70, and so much content that would be introduced with the expansion was either planned or actually actively was already being worked on yeah they, already, bit from these they had a vanilla wow version of uh of, of the outland even blizzcon 2007 panel i know the quality's mega scuffed i couldn't find better online unfortunately but you can make out at the top that this was the Good dungeon mind. list as planned yeah, from april you. 2003 that's pre-vanilla launch and right at the bottom you can see the black temple as the final dungeon it wasn't that content was necessarily cut from vanilla it just wasn't used and it was waiting its turn it's no wonder that karazan is located in deadwind pass by the way a strange place for an expansion raid to still be in vanilla don't you think this I location think raid was in development long before tbc dropped in fact this dungeon would have almost put black rock depths to shame estimated in its earliest version to be as large as lower black rock and upper black rock spire combined and having a load time of 30 minutes tons Holy of work have been fuck. done on the interior the layout texturing and i have to say the early versions especially from the outside look particularly ominous yeah, not that forgetting really the cool. karazhan crypts either I had no a idea series about of that. spooky that sprawling tunnels below the tower housing endless stone walls and restless bones again an area that had begun to be fleshed out from a level design point of yep. view and it was partially used during the karazhan attunement in tbc but never saw the proper light of day as its own piece of content mount hygel is yeah, another all one this stuff highlight. should be in classic wow like classic wow plus like add all of this stuff give us a scarlet crusade raid stuff like this in vanilla it had a raid instance portal connecting it to the dark whisper gorge in southern winter spring it was another zone with a bunch of work that had been put into it which just never released in vanilla again we saw yeah. it in a lot more detail during the burning crusade as a raid and eventually reimagined as a zone during cataclysm even the hellfire peninsula had work put into it during there vanilla it yep. again it was planned to be a later game zone that like would those, eventually uh, ship with tbc mushrooms. you can see tons of landscaping and floating mushrooms dominating mm -hmm. the area in these early screenshots though at some point it was decided that instead of more and more major content patches there would be a full-on expansion many of these unused ideas were roped together and bundled up for world of warcraft's first foray into a totally new world this would release in 2007 as the burning crusade to a huge amount of success and as we know now black temple karazhan and mount hygel ended up being raiding content and hellfire peninsula was the starting zone i know this and we all know this because many of us have done them in tbc or tbc classic oh, and yeah. that's what i mean when i say i've already done the content tons of things that were at an idea stage were later used in some form even the dragon isles were to i think it wouldn't really be a big deal to do it over again if the game had a few little interesting nuances with leveling and it was a very dense and populated area where you could do dungeons and do other kinds of cool shit concept stage during vanilla and that's just dropped as the latest retail mm -hmm. expansion the thing is as much as i like karazhan do i want to do it again at 60 with the same layout and the same bosses no. and the same no. loot that i already know i'm not really sure that i do what if well, absolutely not i mean like they would have to reimagine the entire thing like obviously you should have some of the same bosses like moros should be in the new karazhan uh let's see like, I think a good example of this, right, is, like, they did already reimagine Karazhan. They did it in Legion. And I think the Legion reimagining of Karazhan, the return to Karazhan raid, was fucking amazing. It was really well done. There were some things I didn't like about it, but overall, I thought it was really well designed. So it's like, 
we already have precedent of doing this and it being good just do it again Karazan was different, maybe that could work instead. During Legion, Blizzard reimagined Karazan as a two-part yep. mega dungeon, That's which kept aspects from the past while making it fit better into the newer game. Exactly. I think one of the draws of a classic plus for me isn't just seeing stuff that we come to see eventually, but more something new, unexplored. Hyjal, as it's set out in vanilla, has never been a zone, for example. What if that was to happen? If people came into a classic plus finally and just felt as though they had already done it and already seen it, that would be quite a letdown, I think. Yeah. The second point I want to get into is where does the new content go? Where does it fit? This is kind of a tangent to the question of how would servers be released. I'm assuming if it would happen, they would be fresh, which makes the most sense to me. Mm -hmm. World of Warcraft is fresh. always fun when yeah. you start from square zero but then you have to ask if there is new content where does the new stuff go imagine the scenario classic plus is here fresh okay. servers are out mega hype new content new class tuning new dungeons new raid classic new everything plus hype. okay classic so plus first hype. we have True. to get to level 60 yes. oh wait before we get to level 60 are we going to be doing any new dungeons pre-60 I'm yes, absolutely. They would have to reimagine a lot of the dungeons and make them more interesting. But also, like, not make them... Like, I don't think that they should go and make Classic WoW harder. I think the reason why Classic WoW is popular is because it's not hard. Yeah, don't do that. Like, just but make the dungeons more interesting, add in a few nuances to them, uh, add in new loot, maybe a couple of optional hard mode bosses, kind of, like something similar to that, and just do that, and I think you'd be fine. That's all they really need to do. I mean, what's the point, right? You don't replay dungeons again and again pre-60 unless they are the best for either XP or gold farming, yes. which means the new content kind of has to be better than the existing content or it's going to be instantly run one time by people questing and then not seen again. Does that Not necessarily. So, for example, if you added a couple of pieces of gear that increased your experience and you could only get those pieces of gear inside of the dungeon and they would increase your experience for like, you know, 20 levels or something until like they're, uh, you know, like you're level 40 and it's only level 20. I think that would get people to continue doing and farming the dungeons. Yeah, there are a lot of ways that you could make this work. Aren't the development time when it could be put into something at endgame instead? Mm -hmm. What about a new zone? If it's for leveling it again, people will do it once per character, if it's worth doing. There are some gaps in vanilla questing, I will say that. So maybe yeah. there is space to beef up the leveling journey a little bit. How about raids? Imagine phase one is- I think if they were going to beef up the leveling journey, what I'd want them to do is like kind of reimagine Deadwind Pass to be uh, like in between like Duskwood or like in between like Red Ridge Mountains and, uh, and, and Duskwood or in between Duskwood and Stranglethorn Vale. And just add in also like you don't even need to add in a new zone for leveling. Just add in better quests. Add in like 10 more quests in every zone. Done. Add in rare spawns that give you a bunch of experience whenever you kill them. Add in something like that just molten core and anixia again okay so how many months of that do we have to do before we get a new bit of content what if there was a new raid and it came between molten core and blackwing lair uh -huh. well it has to raise the bar for gear a little so again it's worth doing maybe if we throw in a few bis weapons trinkets whatever it may be in there that'll yep. get people going back to it but then suddenly oh no blackwing lair itself has come out in addition to molten core the new raid and anixia and on a weekly basis then you would be doing anixia for the tier head and the quest turn-ins, Molten Core for Eye of Shadow, Leaves, Bindings and all the other items in there, Blackwing Lurf, your Rejuve Gems, your DFTs and whatever else, yep. and the new raid for the Biss items in there too. That's a lot of raiding, but then AQ40s come out and suddenly about 90% of the old gear is now irrelevant, but you're still going to have to do them on raid night because there's like three Biss items which everyone in the game wants, because that's how classic itemization works. Which Until is Nax is out of course and then your raid is is tired of doing an entire world tour every week also nax gear is kind of an insane step up over everything else and nax gear is disgusting like it was just so much better than everything else that came before it there was like a handful of pieces of gear before then that was better but in general it was fucking insane 
Uh, I think that what they should really do is look at making a few more raids in between that, make more dungeons. Like having the baseline raiding gear, why don't why don't you just change some of the gear? Change Shadow Strike. Change uh the fucking the mace, Finkel's mace from Molten Core. Change Spinal Reaper. Spinal Reaper is a garbage weapon. Nobody ever uses it. Well then change it and make it something better. Uh, add in new items that are more interesting. Yeah, make Vendor Strike useful, exactly. That's vanilla with hypothetically only one more raid tier added. The alternative like, is- I, I think that like, for example, right? Like let's say you have a Scarlet Crusade raid and after you get Corrupted Ashbringer, you then go and you can purify your Corrupted Ashbringer after you clear the Scarlet Crusade raid. That would be fucking awesome that new raids are added after next which solves absolutely nothing because if servers are fresh that's 12 or however many months of no new raid content up to next and if it's not fresh players will go into the new raid with 25 bis geared warriors and absolutely mm -hmm. delete it yep. and all the raid content prior to the new this is actually a very good point because yeah if you give if you give people the ability to get a bunch of these characters geared out you either have to design it to where you need 20 warriors or you have to design it to where 20 warriors will clear the raid in 20 minutes to just balance classes. I think they should do that. Like I, I'm a very big advocate of balancing classes in a very subtle way in Classic Plus. I think they should already be experimenting in this uh, right now. Like, for example, I think they should give Rep Paladins Crusader Strike. I think they should give, uh, let's see... They should probably give Moonkin something to get more mana return or something like that. Uh, they should give Shadow Priest something that makes them a little bit more interesting or is like, not like a debuff cap, same as Affliction Warlocks. They need to make different specs more viable, and they also should balance the other specs and make them better. Raids would also kind of be dead on arrival. So where does the new content mm -hmm. fit here? That's the question I really don't have an answer for. Whatever happens, there would be very clear downsides to it, I think. But maybe just getting something new is worth it all the same. Those yeah. are my two main That's concerns what I would so say. far. Number one, I've already done the content. Try number it. two, where would the new content go? The number three for me is about how World of Warcraft content is consumed, how the game is designed, and the development time that goes into creating new things for the game. So if you've played World of Warcraft for a while, you'll know what the end of expansion life cycle looks like. Sometimes it's up to, or in certain cases, over one year of literally nothing new with classic we know the devs are building the game i think what they should do is they should look at what made runescape and osrs have evergreen type content and this is my opinion as somebody who is not a expert in this but one of the things that made runescape and ever not everquest uh i forgot the other example i was gonna use oh yeah vanilla wow like look at why they were popular massive super long quest lines Things like the Mage Tower, where they have like that Inferno thing in uh in fucking in OSRS, and like these different things that you have in the game to where like these are pinnacles of accomplishment that you want to build your character up to be able to to overcome. So it's not like just raiding, it's also like singular player overcoming content. And it's like you get gear from raiding and then you use that to do like a, a mage tower type thing. Yeah, the infernal cape, right? And that's the kind of stuff that keeps the game alive. Yeah, good solo content. And again, like I know this seems like really weird and like counterintuitive, but yes, I think solo content is super important for an MMO. To a more modern system, and that unfortunately they can't just boot up Wrath of the Lich King.exe and it magically all works. Hence yeah. all the beta and PTR testing and brand new bugs and weird things going wrong occasionally. My favorite part is whenever bugs from the original game happen, like auto attacking Saffron through the uh, through the block, the ice block, and then it then the the explosion still killing you. This happened in Vanilla WoW. It happened in Burning Cru in, in Wrath, and it's still happening. I don't know how they can't fix this. I'll be right back. 
and I've noticed that the more WoW expansions have gone on, there tends to be more and more lead time between the new major patches. Whatever's going on in the background, it's just taking more time. On top of this, World of Warcraft content has a very short life cycle, and this is much more noticeable in the earlier versions of the game. This is what happens when you progress vertically as new content is stacked on top of one another. I will say this was less the case during vanilla. You wanted to go back and do the old raids, but in TBC and especially Wrath, there's just a lot more of do the current tier and then you're kind of done for the week. Add on top. I've always thought that it was good for older raids to still have some good items. There's always going to be like a negative and a positive with almost everything, but in general, I think that's a good thing. For this, that the content being added has to raise the bar in one way or another, or it just won't be worth doing. And yeah. if there's something new, they have to make sure it's actually worth going to. I see many cases where Classic Plus is mentioned that Blizzard should take inspiration from the success of Jagex with Old School RuneScape, yes. which in theory is great. It's proof that new content can keep a game fresh and bring a whole new player base into the game and interested for years to come. But the similarities between Old School RuneScape and World of Warcraft stop at them being called MMORPGs. If Molten Core was a raid in old school runescape you'd have to defeat 40 servants of the fire lord outside of the instance before you could gain access each time you will be able to solo it all the good drops will be a hundred times rarer everything will be tradable the auction house is global there's no weekly reset and you can just spam it non-stop and you would be able to do it with a team if you wanted on top of that old school rune okay sounds good okay yeah, let's try that. Let's see what happens. Escape doesn't really even have a concept of endgame which is clearly defined. You don't get level cap, then start playing. The actual cap in terms of having every skill at maximum level is not something many people have. Content there can remain relevant for years as nearly all gear is tradable. You still have reasons to go back like gold farming, collection logs, iron man accounts where they can't trade and so on and so forth. And leveling there takes considerably longer so people do invest in different tiers of gear and you're going to be getting so much more use out of them. An example of this is within one year of launching, Jagex realized that old school RuneScape wasn't going to survive off pure nostalgia, and they started releasing brand new content. One of the first big new updates was in January 2015. This was about two years after launch. This was Zora yesterday. Again, solo content. Like solo content that players in MMOs can benchmark themselves and say, I'm better than you because I can beat this guy and you can't. Zora is eight years old, a solo boss that added a bunch of new items and mechanics to the game. Today, it still drops items that people would want to chase, and it's an okay gold farm, but it has been nerfed many times over. The point is, this is true across so many of RuneScape's updates. When Alduar drops mm -hmm. in Wrath, am I gonna do Tier 7 again? Realistically, I think so, yeah, I'll still be doing Malagos and Sartharian's Lair, but just not full clears anymore. I haven't done a single Burning Crusade raid during Wrath, and during TBC, I didn't do a single full classic raid either it's just i don't think you should have to i think that expansions are resets i think in general you should be able to use the gear at the end of the expansion to progress in the raid in the new expansion kind of like how burning crusade like vanilla went into burning crusade but i don't think that you should have to go back and raid zg or something like that when it's burning crusade unless you're looking for a mount not how world of warcraft works there's very little reason to go back yeah. sure there's a few mounts such as rivendare's death charger from strat sure. dead or these Zulgarub mounts that may be worth chasing yep. for some collectors but in the latter example not even every class in the game can physically do that i think you can start to see why blizzard put transmog in the game and made old raids soloable keeping old content relevant is something that blizzard has in the grand scheme of things, recently made significant improvements too. They There's have. Chromie Time, pick any expansion you want to level in. True. Baited Raids, go back and do previous raids from the expansion in a different way. Oh my god, bro, y'all remember this fucking shit? I was like, why did they not, why did they hit the Bargas stats? Why did they hit the Bargas stats? Like, I said, don't hit the Bargas stats. But there's a two dots on the ads. What, why are the, how did they get there? How did they, how, I thought we said not to do that. What is, what, 
why does it have corruption on it? Like, that was the most upsetting fucking shit, man. I was so mad. We never cleared this either. Time walking, go into old dungeons or raid, collect resources, oh, buy collectibles, adding pets to old raids, adjusting tuning so old raids can be soloed for collections, and so on. I just can't help but think Classic Plus is going to have a big dead content problem due to how content rolls out during the early versions of WoW and how fast players rebalance the gear. Problem solved. Yeah, just rebalance the fucking gear. That's all you have to do. Let's get through it all. Again, I'd love to hear suggestions on this. All that being said, don't get me wrong, I would love to see Classic Plus in the game as a real thing and for Blizzard to take this in a whole new direction. And whilst the whole it'll take money so they won't do it thing definitely has something to it, I think there's a lot more important things to be answered than just that. A Classic Plus to really work. It might not just be about adding the new content, but entirely rethinking the formula that makes people actually like Classic in the first place. Thanks once again to Gemstone Legends for sponsoring today. You can check it out by the link in the description or the QR code I'm on the screen. It out. Let me know your thoughts on the three points I've gone over. Is there a clear answer out there to this or is it going to involve a lot of compromising? In any event, thank you so much for watching and listening in and I'll see you all in the next one very soon. I think what they need to do is they need to make a PTR and they need to start shooting. Just start putting ideas out there. Put something out there, it's fucking stupid. See how people respond. If they don't like it, delete it. That's it. Still waiting for Season of Mastery 2, it needs to be way different from Classic. Yeah, I know. Like, the reason why I didn't play Season of Mastery 1 is because why the fuck do I want to go and play a harder version of Molten Core to get the same belt. It's the same belt. It, I already had this belt. It was easier. Now it's, it's the same fucking belt. Like, give it more stats. Give it something like that. Like, give us an ability to change. Uh, like, for example, like, what if they had... Um, what if Shadow Strike did Shadow Damage? What if Thunder Strike did Lightning Damage? Or Nature Damage? That's too far? Just, yeah, okay, then let's see. Let's see how far can it go. Let's find out. Yeah, what does that mean? What, is, what does too far mean? Let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Yeah, melee mages. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's get some weird shit up in this bitch. Let's have a little bit of fun. That's the way I see it, man. What do you think about seasonal abyss? Accommodate gear two or three per week? Uh, I don't know. It depends on what it is. They're so scared to change the game fundamentally. Yeah, let's get fucking weird. There it is. I totally fucking agree, man. Absolutely. That's what Ascension WoW does? Yeah, just, uh, bro, like, that's all they need to do. Just, like, look at some of these, like, Ascension WoW, Turtle WoW. Like, we all know what they are. Blizzard knows what they are, too. Just see what they do. See what the things that players, like, respond to. And just be like, just message them. Be like, hey, can you guys send us, like, your fucking, like, your reports on, like, how many people are doing the content just so you know for us to know and i bet they would probably do it yeah why wouldn't they because a lot of the people that make turtle wow and shit they probably want blizzard to make a classic plus it's not like they hate the game they just don't like where the game is turtle wow so many ideas from beta were removed and made new dungeons and raids yeah what about all old content being current item level, but you can't do it in a current raid? I don't know about that. Sir Wild does an awesome job with creating Classic Plus. Yeah, just do the same thing. The issue with Blizzard doing Classic Plus is that it would cost more than $0 to develop. That is a problem. Turtle WoW uh, is already done. This has been one of the best, most fun times I've had in the game. On par with how much fun I had whenever I experienced the game in 2007. Yeah, just take what they do and do it. It's that simple. It, take the stuff that they do that works and put that in the game and then build off of that. Problem solved. Introduce a heroic mode and do some class tuning. Yes, I think that they should absolutely do class tuning. Siege of Nomergon. Yeah, there you go. Let's have to see how far it goes. I love, yeah. Like, 
This is why I want to see doped Olympics. Let's see the human body on enhancing drugs push the boundaries. Yeah, except for nobody gets to, nobody has to die on this. We just get to play the game and like do a little bit more damage. Like it's totally fine. I don't know, man. Like I'm just hoping something fun happens with Classic WoW. I like Classic WoW a lot, but I wish that there was more to do. And there was like something new to to look forward to. I don't know, something like the Ascension Private Server with resources like Blizzard has. Yeah, exactly, man. Huge potential in this. Yeah, I think Classic Plus has more potential than retail than retail WoW. In the long term, I think it does. The reason why is because Retail WoW is like I'm a zero updates, eighteen months, it's growing. Oh yeah, we'll watch this. I'm not gonna watch it today, I'll watch it probably a week later on. Uh the Wrath Plus. I think that they should do vanilla plus. Because in vanilla WoW, you actually went out in the world. That to me is super fucking important. And if you don't have a reason to go out into the world, you've already lost. You're just sit like in and this is what I think happened with like Burning Crusade is that you had the world like this and then it became this is the world and now this is the world and this is Outland. And then whenever Wrath came out, they said, "Okay, now this is the world and this is Northrend." And all of this and all of this is deleted. It doesn't matter, nobody cares about it. Math is just sitting on Dalaran waiting for raids. Yes. And that's not very good. Problem is, the long travel is boring. That's true. I do, however, think that it was fun going around and getting world buffs in Classic WoW. I absolutely think so. I think collecting the consumables and stuff like that is great. And I think you could get rid of a lot of the friction. And say, Yes, I know, I know, I know. I know people are going to be upset about this, but I think that if you take world buffs out of, out of Classic WoW, you take the world out of Classic WoW. The reason why most people went around to do different things was to get world buffs. When did you go out into the open world? For world buffs. That's the reason. I remember the thrill of Ashenvale. Open world PP was amazing. I miss it. Yeah. Is it a bad take, Asma? No, it's not. What is it? Why, why is it bad? You know, for Nixion to teach us dragon flying in classic? Yeah, there you go. Really, really shitty chore. Shouldn't be what's forcing you out into the world. I don't know. I, I don't think world buffs are as bad as people make them out to be. I think also that's why Season of Mastery was also boring, is because people liked being able to blow up the bosses and raid in two hours and then be done with it and then still be, still be, uh, you know, progressed and like have like competitive gear. Redesign world uh, world buffs, yeah, exactly. Let's go back to Andy. I like your world buff, uh, Chrono Boon idea. I just store everything and use it at will, exactly. If world buffs are the only reason to go out into the world, the world itself sucks. It's not that it sucks. It's just that people, the content doesn't suck because people don't do it. People don't do things because they're not min-maxed. That's why. People always do things because they are efficient. You always know, say take things out of games that are not fun. World buffs are not fun. Being required to log into the game at times not to play, but to get ready for the next time you raid was not good. Okay, so with a lot, I actually think that raiding with world buffs was fun. I will go out and I will say it. I think that it was fun to go in there, Omega buffed, and fucking destroy the bosses. A hundred percent, man. And yes, I do think that it was stupid that you had to sit there and fucking buff your character and you couldn't raid. Obviously, that was bad. But this is that is an acquisition problem, not a world buff problem getting them was not fun then change the way you get them like for example like yes purging world buffs is garbage just make it to where you can't do that problem solved yeah <laughs> yeah you keep them after death sure yeah why not yeah I'm wiping to became 10x worse with world buffs that make them persist through death 
Yeah, what, what, what's the problem? If you go that dedicated summoners, it's not too bad to get them and risk-free. Well, nothing's really risk-free, but yeah. So I won fall with world buffs. So it was the way it forced you to play after getting them. Yeah, I think world buffs should be a consumable. How many MMOs have world buffs these days? Um, pretty much none of them. But I think that the issue that going out in the world would have, and I think also like giving people more quest lines like Scepter of the Shifting Sands would also get people to go out into the world if the rewards were very good. Yeah, I'm not sure how many other games have world buffs. I have no idea. But I'm just talking about Classic WoW. It was funny having to watch out for purgers in the city being flagged for PvP. Really? I, I don't know. I, I, I thought that was stupid. And, I mean, even, like, I mean, Kevin Jordan, original WoW dev, like, said that wasn't really intended. It was just, like, an oversight. So it's not like this is some sort of, like, grand design of the game. I think purging people's world buffs and stuff like that are annoying.